Good afternoon.、Um, the world is right now quite a strange place, especially if you just think about the kind of violence that we've been surrounded by in the past few years.、Um, a person using an AK-47, just like this one in Charlie Hebdo in Paris, and killing over 12 people dead. The explosion that happened in the airport in Brussels. People using cars to go up on sidewalks and hit people in Barcelona and London. Again, somebody using an AK-47 just like this and killing 90 people inside the club in Paris. I mean, the ongoing wars in Syria and Afghanistan and what's happening right now in the United States is a bit surreal. So it might be strange, but what I'm going to do right now is to give you a short tutorial about how to use these guns. Because of this world of violence that we're surrounded by, this world of terrorism that we live in, one of these guns might happen to fall at your feet, and your life or the life of your friends and family depend on it that you know how to use it. I hate guns, but what I teach you right now could possibly save your life. Okay, so this is the AK-47. It was made by Mikhail Kalashnikov in 1949. It's very reliable because it can be covered in sand, it can be covered in oil, it can be completely covered in blood, and still you can always pull it back and it'll fire. Now, in this small tutorial, I'm just going to share with you two ways to be able to shoot the gun. Now, this lever right here, if you push it up, that means it's in the semi-automatic position. Meaning that when you pull the trigger, only one bullet comes out at a time. Now, if you put it down here, that's the fully automatic position. Meaning, if you pull the trigger, all the bullets will come out one by one by one until you release your finger or the cartridge is empty. Now, if you were in that horrible circumstance, I would recommend putting it in the fully automatic position. And then hold it at a 90-degree angle. Keep your hand on the wood part because you don't want it to get burned. And as you're pulling the trigger, and the bullets are coming out one by one, kind of do a swaying motion of like a, a figure eight, so that then you can make your escape to get out of there some way. It's very short, I know. Now this is the sawed-off shotgun. Now it's a bit different than the the AK-47, as the bullets that it shoots are shotgun shells that are full of small metal balls. So when you shoot it, it goes into a very wide spray, which could be useful because if you have a large group of women and children coming to get you, you can shoot into them and hit many of them at the same time. So again, that you can make your escape and get out of there.、Um, this gun is actually an exact replica of the gun that they used in the Columbine shootings. And the story came up that they found one of the shoot one of the students dead with this gun, but he wasn't one of the shooters, and he was like this. Now the story came up that the shooters came in with all these guns. They would use them and then kind of drop them and then use them and go around the corner and use them again. But there was this one brave student. That saw that they dropped this gun, and he was under a desk, and he came over and grabbed it, and he tried to shoot them as they came back, but the safety was on, so he got shot, and he died. But now I can show you guys where the safety is. It's right next to the pistol grip. It's a small little metal button that you push in and out. And、uh, if he had known that, he could have shot them, and then prevented them from killing seven other people. But then uh, uh, he didn't. But now you know. And、um, the last gun that I want to share with you is the、um, the pistol. Okay, I stop there. Now,、um, strategy number one: the looks on your faces right now are quite similar to the looks of other audiences when I perform this piece called "What You Need to Know." It's a mix between shock and fascination. Now. Understand. While I'm performing this piece, I have three dancers behind me doing a contemporary choreography, and then I offer the audience themselves the opportunity to come up on stage and shoot the gun yourself. You know, just so that if you're in that horrible circumstance, that you can practice, and well, you know, so that then you have something to aim at. You can always shoot one of the dancers. You know, you know, because it's good to have something moving.、Um, so I load it up with、uh, theater blanks, and then I give them these shooters that always come, and I say, "Okay, so which of the dancers would you like to shoot first?" <laughs> and、uh, what do you think they always say? 
it's the white woman. Every single time. You know, some kind of political correctness takes over their brain, and then in this circumstance, they think that maybe it's better to be a little bit more sexist than actually racist, you know. <laughs> now, I give you the experience of this performance and share this fragment because I just wanted to show you one of the strategies that I use in my performances. I am always trying to find a way to project an audience into an emotional situation that they wouldn't normally find themselves in. And maybe it's a situation that you wouldn't even want to be in, or it makes you feel uncomfortable. But that's what I think that art should do. It should make you feel uncomfortable. It should challenge your beliefs. It should challenge your morals to make you discover where do you stand? I mean, what do you believe in? Would you come up on stage and shoot that gun or not? I mean, I could even tell you that whole story about the Columbine thing, it's not even true. I just use it as a tool for you to engage yourselves. So this is really like an anti-gun performance that uses guns deviously to give you that experience. Strategy number two. Ladies and gentlemen, the world population has reached a staggering 7.6 billion people in the world. And every single day, 350,000 people are born, but only 150,000 people die, which is actually too bad. Because that means every single day, 200,000 hungry consumers are added to this planet, and we just cannot sustain them all. So what are we going to do? How are we going to make a more ecological planet and support this growing population, especially as we have climate change deniers that are in positions of power? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do it by changing our behavior. And we're going to change our behavior now, ladies and gentlemen, not because we're inspired by some great TED Talk. We're not going to do it because we're inspired by some great work of art. No, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do it because we are inspired by vodka. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I have no promise to bribe you to make a more ecological planet. So what I'm going to do is propose to you seven promises. And for every promise that you believe in, you come up here and you will receive a button that says, I made a promise. And you will receive a free shot of vodka. <laughs> but maybe it's a bit too early to be drinking vodka right now. But I just wanted to share this other strategy that actually bribery really does work. So we throw out these seven promises and people start to reflect about their lives, go to the farmer's market and cut down on food miles, cut down by carbon emissions by not taking a plane for one year. Just imagine, I promise not to have children for the rest of my life. This also creates some arguments between young couples in the audience, but I mean, it doesn't mean you can't have children, you can adopt, I mean, they're all over. And um, one girl came up to me, one girl came up to me and said, I made that promise a while ago, and now I haven't eaten meat and I'm a vegan for three years. So just by creating that opportunity, you're able to make people take action. We've done this on the streets of Ghent and people signed up. We do it to start parties. We do it for corporate gigs. We even did it once for international security conference with ambassadors and diplomats after a meal of champagne and caviar, which is a bit surreal. But even these guys were signing up, you know, making promises and taking these shots. So even bribery and maybe a little bit of humor and a bit of healthy peer pressure within the room make it possible for people to change their beliefs, change their behavior, and in turn help change the world. Um, though I must admit that sometimes people get so drunk that they completely forget their promises and uh, <laughs> then it doesn't work all the time. So it's not a perfect system. Um, now, strategy number three, my last one. Now, if everybody would humor me for just one moment, very quickly, introduce yourself to somebody that's a stranger right next to you, okay? Uh, just do it right now. Introduce, say hello. Uh, what's your name? Mark. Mark, my name's Davis. Nice to meet you. Okay. All right. So, now, I've been invited here because of a, a performance that I made that one of the TED people saw called A Better Place. 
And what I was doing, I was trying to contextualize a way that we could let our ideas travel because you know, we are in a box right now inside this, this theater. So I thought of this idea that instead of asking everybody to turn their phones off, instead, everybody turn their phones on. And then you open up your contacts and you look for somebody that's available in that moment and then you pass your phone off to a stranger. <laughs> and then suddenly you, re you receive this phone and then you, you have to make this phone call and say, um, hello, no, no um, this isn't Kaya, uh, this is Eric and I'm in a performance and I'm just here to ask you, how do you make the world a better place? And it's a very simple and naive question, but something beautiful happens because then 155 people are spreading around the theater and the bar having these humorous, engaged conversations with people that they don't even know, you know? And finally, we gather everybody back in the theater, and then we kind of think about the ideas that people have raised. Microfinancing, seed bombing cities. Oh, I like the, the universal make love hour, that everybody had to make love at the exact same hour. Um, <laughs> I also like the one that came up in, in Tromsø, which was like everybody in the theater, the next day had to buy all their fish from Torva, which... <laughs> He was just like some kind of local fisherman and uh, you had to buy it from him instead of like the supermarket, so it definitely made his day better. Um, we tried to always apply the ideas ourselves, and so in Antwerp we made a vegetarian meal, um, which then turned into actually eating food for the future. So they were eating these um, insects and mealworms and everything. Um, so by just creating the opportunity, these strangers could, could connect either live or on the phone to help realize an idea that might have just been a vague thought before. Now just think about that person that you just introduced yourself with. Um, have a conversation with them. I mean, who knows, maybe that conversation turns into some creation that we're all embracing for the future, or Maybe you just find somebody to do your taxes. I don't know. Um, <laughs> now, as an artist, I just, I'm more interested in raising questions than actually giving answers. But I hope that you could be more open to be subversive and devious and to look at your ideas or uh, projects upside down or, or inside out or broken to a thousand pieces. Um, use bribery whenever you can. Um, as long as you don't get caught, because you can see that it works. And think outside of the box, because it's just important to connect to people outside of your own zone, out of your own first circle. As I hope I could share that even an artistic performance can be much more than just passive entertainment, but a way to inspire people to take a stand, challenge their beliefs, and hopefully contribute to make the world a better place. Now, um, if anybody during this day would like to make a promise and have a shot of vodka with me, well then, let me know. Thank you. <laughs>